Welcome back. Niners Nightly on a Tuesday. We're rolling along. Uh, I like a little Eric Clapton. A request. I asked a request there for Greg, and he came through. Um, It's in the way that you use it. And I've got a fun fact. We welcome in Matt Barrows from The Athletic, formerly of the Sacramento Bee. Longtime friend, longtime Niner, beat writer, probably the best there is. And he's with us on the UMA guest line to chop it up and talk Niners. Maddie, I got a fun fact that to uh, to start us off with. Are you ready for the fun fact of the night? Hit me with your fun fact. <laughs> okay. I've been watching, reviewing the game. You know me. I'm that sick individual that watches the game like five times. Um, so I've been watching the game. And guess who was on the game this year, this week? It was Al Michaels and Kirk Herbstreet uh, on Amazon Prime. And um, I'm a big Al Michaels fan. He used to be a Giants announcer, I think, in the in the mid '70s. I think he uh, broadcast with Lon Simmons, uh, maybe '74, something like that. But anyway, Al Michaels lives in L.A. He's an L.A. Kings fan. He's obviously best known for "Do You Believe in Miracles," but his claim to fame is that he's never eaten a veg, knowingly eaten a vegetable, is in his entire life. Do you think that is true or false? Do you believe that Al Michaels, who is probably approaching 80, got through eight decades of life on Earth with not a singular, not a single vegetable eaten? Is that possible? I would say that's false. I I imagine Al Michaels' mother gave him vegetables before he could reject them. You know, (laughs) (laughs) know, he's a three-year-old. He doesn't have any vegetables then. Not I, one I mean, little piece of broccoli or cauliflower on his baby tray? Is that what um, Michaels would have us believe? I'm seriously. I mean, are you telling me that he didn't, th- there was no Gerber? There was no Gerber of, uh, you know, mushed up something or others? I, exactly. Some, I, 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 I say false. I say false. I, also, I mean, I, how health? I mean, how could you live to 80 with no veggies? Not, I mean, I'm, you don't have I, to be a vegetarian. I, don't know. But I, I mean, mean, I like a nice smatter of veggies. I mean, you, you would need the vitamins somehow, right? I mean, you don't you don't get your your vitamin C and your vitamin D through through eating hamburgers and steak. When the Niners go Chick Fil A catered, you know they'll sometimes they'll mix in a salad. I see the salad there. I'll take some salad. I'll have some salad. I'll be that media guy that has a little salad. Yeah, we all we all eat a little bit of salad. Eric Branch eats a lot of salad. Have you ever seen how much Branch? Uh, sa- Salad branch eats. Well, his name's Branch. Part uh, part bovine. (laughs) There you go. Branch also famous for his for his. Just one more question. It may be an odd one and maybe long. Uh, Yes, but anyway, we digress. Niners Chiefs. Niners Chiefs. Niners haven't beaten the Chiefs in a while. What would a win on Sunday over the Chiefs do for the Forty Niners? Do you think? Oh, I think that would be huge. Uh, it would be a huge confidence boost. It would set them up really nicely uh, for the second half of the season, I think. I think it's going to be a better team in the second half of the season. Um, this would be like the the win in Philadelphia last year. That was the what I call the regular season Super Bowl. Uh, and they came in there, they were determined to win, and uh, they ultimately blew the doors off the Eagles. Uh, I don't see that happening in this game, but uh, a win over a team that is really good at, at comebacks, and that's something obviously the 49ers have had trouble with this season. Their M.O. is to get out to uh, a nice lead at halftime and then blow it. Uh, if they could uh, you know, stave off Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and uh, that offense, that Chiefs offense, that would be um, – you know, that would be a confidence boost for sure. I think the Niners need this one to get their swagger back. I don't I don't think they've had the same swagger all year. Maybe it's the absence of Greenlaw because he's a big part of that violence and that swagger and that intimidation. But, man, they just don't quite – they haven't seemed like the same team since, you know, the season began. It's It was a weird vibe all summer with the holdouts. Um, it's just been – Shanahan seems – I mean, really tired. Lynch seems really gassed. They just seem like they, you know, like they themselves have played all these extra football games over the last few years. Do you, what do you? What's your sense of it? I mean, you've been covering this team way longer than I have. 
Do you think they lost their swagger by losing to Kansas City, and do you, can they regain it with a win? You know, the season is so long that you have you have several stages. Um, you know, last year they started out red hot, then they went immediately into a, a three-game funk, and everybody was wondering what the heck is going on with this team. They weren't themselves, and then the bye week came, and they came back, and they went out to Jacksonville, and Jag- Jaguars were a good team at that point. Uh, they were coming off their bye, and, and the 49ers just absolutely demolished them. So, um, you know, th- there's going to be more iterations to come. I mean, we're only one third of the of the of the way through the regular season right now. Um, so, um, you know, I, I don't think it's panic time. I don't think you can reach any grandiose conclusions. If they, if they beat the chiefs and then beat the, uh, the Cowboys, everybody's going to be talking about how great the 49ers are. They're going to shoot up all these dumb, dumb, uh, power poles and things like that. Um, and then they'll, they might win coming out of the bye, and then there'll be a couple of losses in the, in the, Narratives will all be totally uh, opposite. Um, my point is that um, it, it, it's very hard to to make any big conclusions about this team. Um, you know, they got the Cowboys coming up. That's been a team that they've done very well against. They get up to that game, um, and uh, I think that'll be a nice sort of barometer. These next two games, a nice barometer of where this team is. I agree. I absolutely agree. Matt Barrow's with us on the UMA guest line. Anders Carlson, the team signed the place kicker today, the brother of Daniel Carlson, to the practice squad. He's not on the active roster, but Jake Moody's got the ankle. Matthew Wright's got banged on the shoulder. Um, is this just, you think, insurance against Wright's shoulder, or do you think there's a chance Carlson kicks against Kansas City? What's your, I get, you know, I, I heard, do you have sources? Do you, are you reading tea leaves? What can you tell us about the kicker situation? Yeah, I do have a source. Uh, the source wasn't sure. He said uh, 60-40 that Carlson would play on Sunday. Um, you know, obviously Matthew Wright is dealing with this uh, the shoulder injury, and, and it probably is not affecting him on field goals and, and things like that. And you think, oh, okay, well, if that's the case, why doesn't he play? The problem is that when you handle the kickoffs and you're short on kickoffs like Matthew Wright consistently was on, on Thursday – you have to be there to, to make a tackle. And um, yeah. a bum shoulder only exacerbates the issue of your kicker having to do that. The The irony is that uh, Anders Carlson wasn't great on touchbacks last year either. Um, I, I think he uh, had a 43% touchback rate, uh, which is low. Um, Jake Moody's was up over 60 last year, and, and e- even he wasn't – real consistent on the, on the touchback. So, um, you know, that's, that's sort of like a, a cycle that the 49ers are in. They can't find any backup kickers who can consistently boom the ball into the back of the end zone. Um, so they're uh, having to settle for kickers that can't, and those kickers end up getting hurt. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's been a trend so far this season. Um, something <laughs> they either that, need that a we'll kicker. have to watch. Yeah, they need a kicker with a booming leg, or they need a kicker that can really hit. You know? <laughs> exactly. Can... Somebody said on, on Twitter today they they're gonna start training their safeties to uh, <laughs> to to kick the ball. Uh, you know, if Talano Hufanga wants a side gig, uh, he should spend his uh, his wrist rehab just kind of booming kickoffs, uh, and he'd have the job uh, no problem. I mean, that, that would be a real asset. Imagine if you had a a 235-pound guy who, who could fly down the field and who could also kick it, you know, at least to the goal line. That would be uh, – you, you'd have a job in today's NFL. Oh, it would be awesome. It would be amazing. Could you imagine we get to OTAs next year and they're like, you know what, Robert Beal is going to punt for us this year. <laughs> and he is just – we feel really good about his ability on coverage units and – uh, he's got a. We didn't know, but he's got a booming leg. How about Adrian Amos? Um, he's a veteran name. He's thirty-one. Um, you know, this guy is a pretty good player with Green Bay, with Chicago. Um, he's now, but he's been around the league. He's he's uh, uh, in twenty twenty-two. He had a career high hundred and two tackles. He's played free safety. He's played strong safety. Came up as a as a corner slot cornerback. Experience, good cover guy. What, what do you think of the Amos pickup? Anything? Or or is, yeah, well, is it I mean, directly I, related to anything? 
I, you know, my my take is that um, if, if you want to find a uh, off the street free agent in mid October, um, safety is probably the best position to go looking for because um, the, the safety market is always soft and uh, there, there always seems to be uh, good to, to very good safeties available. I mean, Deshaun Gibson was signed really late in the game a couple of right. seasons ago. They, they brought in Logan Ryan midway, not even midway, late last year. I think it was December. He was on a, on a Disney cruise when they found him. Um, and he was he was um, probably more than serviceable. I was going to say serviceable. He, he was better than that. So, I, you know, I don't know what kind of shape Amos is in. Um, he does have a good background, um, a, a good resume. And, um, you know, I, I expect more of the same. This guy will be sort of the, uh, the veteran presence that they're missing. He's, he'll start out on practice squad. They can elevate him for Sunday's game if uh, Malik Mustafa isn't ready. But, um, you can absolutely see a scenario where he comes up to the active roster and then has an impact similar to uh, what those other guys uh, I just mentioned had in previous years. Two last questions for Matt Barrows, uh, who's with us on the UMA guest line. Is CMC going to go this year, you think? I mean, is he going to play? I mean, the Niners could have opened his practice window this week to return from the IR, and they opted not to, and I kind of view that as a bad sign. I'm, I know people are saying maybe week 10, week 11, they're hopeful. Um, you know, you have a lot of sources. You talk to a lot of people. You're as dialed in as anybody. What are you hearing about CMC? Yeah, I, I think it was always post by for him once they put him on uh, injured reserve and and decided that okay, this guy needed X amount of weeks of rest, and then we'll begin a very measured, slow ramp up. Um, so, I mean, that always made sense that it would be after the bye, and, and uh, you know, if, if that's the case, uh, he would come back November 10 against Tampa, um, in Tampa, which I think is a grass field. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not, but um, that, that always seemed right, that the 49ers would decide that, okay, big picture, if we just sort of uh, hold steady, even if we get to four and four at the bye, if we can get our you know number one guy healthy, um, and then get Dre Greenlaw back, and you know, Greenlaw's sort of the uh, CMC of the defense, then you know we're, we're going to be a different team in the second half of the season. That's when we'll make our run. Uh, so it would be more like you know 2021, 2022, when they're having to really kind of get in gear in December just to make the playoffs, and then they go into the postseason with good, good momentum. Last In the last segment, I'm going to give my 11 trade targets for the Niners. One of them is a former Matt Barrows NFL draft crush. So the, when that, so the fact that you're here tonight uh, really has me excited. Um, last one for you. Do you think Lynch is active at the trade deadline? He's really popularized the midseason trade during his tenure here. Um, not just the CMC trade. He's made a number of deals. And I think there's probably more bidders because... It's worked out. Is there a trade target that you're thinking about or your mailbag fans are thinking about? Is there a name out there you can throw us? Well, yeah, there's a bunch of names. I mean, I think that defensive line, that's obviously an area that they traded for in the past. It's, it's beat up right now. They're having to bring guys off the, uh, the practice squad each week just to fill out the game day roster. So, I mean, um, you know, Hassan Reddick jumps out right away, obviously. Yeah not happy in New York um, would be a really nice compliment to this team would, would get you uh, probably more quality snaps from Leonard Floyd could give Nick Bosa a break. Um, you know, right now it's, it's Bosa Floyd. And then, you know, a couple of uh, younger inexperienced guys who um, I, I guess it's good that they're getting that experience. That's going to pay off down the line. But, you know, if, if there is a, even, you know, a couple of, weak hamstring strain for one of those starters, Floyd or Bosa. Um, I don't think that's where the 49ers want to be. It would just give you more cushioning for that very important position. So he's won uh, Aziz Ojolari. Uh, you remember him coming out of Georgia a few yeah. years ago. He's, he uh, had a nice game the other night. He's got three sacks. He's not a starter with the Giants. The Giants seem to be doing – New York Giants things and sort of uh, <laughs> circling the drain here as we approach midseason. They might be interested in the trade. So 
Um, a couple of defensive ends and a couple of defensive tackles. DJ Jones would be um, a real hit, I think, with with the fan base. Just given his background here, he's with Denver. The Broncos are three and three. So are the 49ers. But um, you know, in, in a couple of weeks, when the trade deadline comes around, the uh, the uh, the picture could be a little bit more clear with the Broncos. Um, and then Calais Campbell is, in, is the name um, at least my readers uh, keep bringing up. And I, I think it's a good one. Um, yeah. He's in Miami right now. The Dolphins are having all sorts of problems. And Campbell is uh, is a guy like uh, Eater Gross Matos. He can play inside. He can play outside as sort of a, a base down guy. Uh, I think he'd be a really nice uh, pickup at midseason. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure he'd like to go from Miami to uh, a, uh, a contending team as well. Maddie, we're thinking the same way. A lot of those guys are on my list. Uh, congrats, by the way, to uh, The Athletic for adding Mike Silver, one of the very, very best. And you guys are getting a good one. Uh, way to go there. And Maddie, we'll let you, <laughs> there you, go. We'll let you go on on that note, and we'll see you tomorrow in Santa Clara. All right. See you, Larry. Talk to you then.